Fox Sports. We are Fox. We are San Diego. What a storybook start in the major leagues. 22-year-old Casey Kelly last night. First ever major league game. Six shutout innings in front of his father and brother as he defeated one of the playoff teams to be the Atlanta Braves. What a game for Kelly. He called it a dream in his uh, young life. As the Padres beat the Braves and entertain them again tonight at Petco Park here in San Diego. Game two of the three game series. Atlanta and San Diego. So the San Diego Padres win again eight in a row their longest in uh, more than two years and they've won five straight at home. That's their longest winning streak here at Petco. Why not win nine. Everything's clicking right Be now. Fine. Firing on all pistons right now. Every facet of the game for the San Diego Padres. They've got the pitching. They've got the defense. They've got the timely hitting. So continue the streak tonight against a good ball club, these Atlanta Braves. And they got the chemistry of a great spirit down in that dugout. Well, it's as old as strike three. The, uh, the way you build a ball club. You build the strength up the middle. And last night in little ways, it was the middle of the Padre lineup that did the job. Dick, any team that contends through the years, you'd start with the catcher, second base, shortstop, and center fielder. Well, let's step behind the plate. It was Yasmani Grandel with the home run. And then what did you think of Casey Kelly? Oh, he was outstanding. And then you have your middle infielders, Cabrera. On the left side. And then Forsyth with the shillelagh. Doing it with the leather and the bat. There's your second baseman. And then who's up the middle? Who's the center fielder? Daddy Long Arms. <laughs> Cameron Maven in center field. Yeah, he covers some serious ground out there, making up with some speed if he doesn't get a good jump. But up the middle right now, it looks very promising for the San Diego Pottery Ball Club. They're young, they're fired up, and they're ready to win nine in a row tonight. And those five players, listen to this, 26 years of age, Maven and Forsyth. Mm -hmm. Grandal's only 23. Kelly is uh, 22. And uh, who have I left out here? Forsyth is 25. Forsyth, right. And you so want, the future is bright there as well. Absolutely. And continuity is a big thing. You look at, like, these Braves. They've had some continuity during the history of these ball clubs, right? You tie them up. You sign them for a long time. Hopefully they're with us for a long, long time. Well, they're going to roll out a young man who is not allowed to run in some 20 and a third innings. He beat the Padres in Atlanta. And he'll go against Andrew Warner, who made his major league debut a week ago with a victory. Warner. Against the outstanding Atlanta Braves lineup tonight.
living life like you should. Just say you never had it so good. Yeah, well, we've been playing that theme throughout the season. You never had it so good, mm -hmm. and it really does apply to this late August night as Freddy Gonzalez will try to stop the eight-game winning streak of the Padres. His team is 3-7 and seven in their last 10. That's about as big a slump as they've had all year long. We're ready to go. Andrew Werner, the left-hander's first pitch is inside. The Braves, with a left-handed dominant hitting lineup, have seen a lot of southpaws this year, and the Padres are going to throw two back-to-back -back here, Warner tonight and Eric Stoltz tomorrow afternoon. They have a losing record against left-handed pitching, and they're some 20 games above 500 against right-handers. Warner's first start, solid six innings, allowed a couple of runs, and his first major league win. One and two to Michael Bourne. A.C. Kelly, a spectator, a happy man today, barraged by reporters and the media. Pleasant young man. Strike three call. Bourne caught looking. Good start for Andrew Warner. And this is the lineup he'll be facing throughout this evening. Bourne, then Prado and Hayward. Chipper Jones in the cleanup spot. Then another left-handed bat, Freddie Freeman. Reed Johnson in left field tonight, a right-handed hitter hitting at 300. Brian McCann, then Dan Ugla, and Chris Medlin, the pitcher. Well, at first pitch, Dick, it was 72 degrees, but there's some humidity in the air. And the reason why I say that, maybe Andrew Warner can challenge these hitters a little bit more. And uh, it'll be interesting to see the face, him face, Chipper Jones from the right side tonight. Otto takes a strike. Martin has uh, been tough against left-handers. And, of course, he sees a lot of them as a right-handed batter. They don't take him out of the lineup. He's hitting 331 on the season against lefties. Above his 295 overall average. Jason Hayward on deck. Chipper Jones in our interview quick to point out the fine young talent on this Atlanta roster including Hayward. Nice interview by the way. Thank you. Well how can you miss with this man. I mean, we could have gone another 20 minutes. Sure. And, you could add a cup of coffee yeah. with him. That's right. And he would have been willing to do it. And here's a great player that understands his obligation to the fans and the press that he's giving back by his cooperation. Ground ball up the middle base hit. Prado with the first hit of the game a solid single to center and let's take a look at the Padres defense brought to you by Mazda. Quentin on his birthday 30 years of age Maven and Venable in the outfield Headley Cabrera Forsyth and Alonzo around the horn. John Baker handling the offerings of 25 year old Andrew Werner. 30 years young today is Carlos Quinton. Usually players on their birthdays do something mm -hmm. special. Well Jason Hayward against the Padres something about that SD on the uniform that brings out the best in him. He's hitting 379 against San Diego this year. He's punished other teams as well last 13 games at a 380 pace. One and one. Well, Andrew Werner has to rely on the location as you take a look at uh, the few scattered clouds here. Did you get a little Park. sprinkles coming to the ballpark today? I, I did. did coming up. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Unusual late August. It counts for the humidity here tonight. Almost Atlanta weather. Breaking ball away. Two and one. Andrew Werner does not have the wipeout pitch, the strikeout pitch. Not a lot of swings and misses. He's going to have to rely on location. The fastball down and away to the lefties. And that little sweeping breaking ball we just saw that missed for a ball. Infield back looking for two, but Hayward's a good runner. And it's two and two. And how about that anthem tonight? The horn swoggle. Mm. The sound of, I, I counted quickly, 25 French horns playing the national anthem. It was a terrific feeling. It just filled the ballpark with a, a very uh, great sound, great wasn't sound. it? Yeah, terrific sound. There goes the runner. Broken bat. Fly ball. Did he catch it? No. Headley now fires to first. Hayward had stopped thinking that the ball would be caught or he would have been safe. There's a lesson, folks. You run out everything. He thought he had hit a fly ball to Headley that would become a double play because the runner Prado, Prado was going. 
Instead, uh, Headley couldn't field it cleanly, and uh, Hayward had stopped, and here's what happened. He got sawed off, but I'm just glad that bat did not hit anybody. He had in it and out. in the webbing, yep. didn't he? In and out of the glove, and great second effort. And you made a good point, Dick. Jason Hayward stopped, had to restart the engines, and they get him just by a full step. The bat's broken. Looks like a double play. Oh, no. Oh, I better get going. Too late. But, yeah, at first I don't think he realized where the ball was. So a man in scoring position for Chipper Jones. Jones who had his own way with the Padres down in Atlanta last night and the opener was 0 for 3 including a ground ball double play to end the game. There goes the runner to third and no throw by Baker. Well, he stole that one on Andrew Werner, who didn't give him a good look. Looks like he gave him the one look. Runners will feed off that. 16th steal for Prado. You got to look a couple times, maybe two, three times, to have that runner hold in his tracks before you commit to the plate. Two balls and a strike to Jones. He's hitting 310 against lefties this year, the eight time All Star. Well, he might just try to pitch Chipper Jones down and away with soft stuff and take his chances with Freddie Freeman on deck. Uh oh, that ball's hit well to right center field, deep right center, and Jones' ball is not caught by Venable. The run scores. Jones into second, Atlanta 1 0. That ball hit deep to the 400 foot sign. Venable acting as though he should have caught it. A very tough chance. No chipper can still drive it long, and that's his 55th RBI of the year. Oh, William had a bead on it, just couldn't come up with it. Where did it hit it? On the thumb? Oh, just off the thumb and the heel part of the glove. Now, that would have been a nice catch. Getting him out of the inning. Good effort by Will. In this eight game winning streak the Padres have scored first in all eight games and they've scored early six times in the first inning twice in the second inning including last night. So that threatens that uh, wonderful winning streak because the correlation between scoring first and victory is a strong one. Freddie Freeman. Want to stop the Braves right here. You know, I think if you ask Will Venable, hey, is that a catchable ball? No doubt about it. I think by Will's reaction, he expected himself to catch that ball. Even though it was a tough play going away from the from the infield, numbers, number and name towards the infield. You know, don't you think it's a more difficult play for an outfielder who has to angle and hits the warning track at an angle? When you're going straight back, you kind of have it measured mm -hmm. where that fence is. But when you're angling across, you're on the warning track longer, and you don't know when that wall's going to come up and meet you. A good, good very good point. And that's exactly what he did going at it at an angle. Check swing and he's out of there. A couple of strikeouts for Andrew Werner, but the combination of Prado and Chipper Jones produces an Atlanta run.
inning tonight. Let's look at the San Diego lineup. Brought to you by your San Diego County Toyota dealers, Cabrera, Venable, and Headley. This is the lineup basically that uh, succeeded in the sweep of the Arizona series. Quinton, clean up. Alonzo hits fifth and Forsyth. Maven bat seventh and Baker and Werner will hit ninth. And what a pitcher this young Chris Medlin is off Tommy John surgery. He's 26 and he's been nearly perfect in his five starts. Another pitcher coming off Tommy John and coming back stronger than ever and the numbers prove it. The ERA, the starts because he was in the bullpen for a while. Opponent's batting average, but he's got a plus fastball curve change up in a slider. Dick, it's all about location with Chris Medlin pounding the zone. He's up around the low 90s, 91, 92. Get this, fans. The last 16 times he started, Medlin, Atlanta has won all 16 games. In 137 years of the Braves franchise, no one's ever done that. 16 consecutive starts, 16 consecutive wins for the team. He uh, shut out the Padres 6 0, and Atlanta gave up five hits. No walks. He yeah. doesn't give any free tickets. Exactly. And he's also getting some support as well because of those numbers. So if he gets a lead, chances are he shuts down the opposition. Hopefully that changes tonight. Cabrera swings and sends a fly ball to right. That chases Hayward back, but plenty of room. One away. Well, we talked about uh, charging into the wall. Matt Kemp in the game tonight in Colorado. Look at this. Mm. He gets pancaked. And it's not the uh, first time he was OK. It didn't look like it when he ran into that screen last night. Kemp, a former high school football player, <laughs> that's like running into a linebacker that's hiding off to the side that clotheslines you. And fortunately, the star outfielder for the Dodgers, OK, but hazardous duty. You got to be fearless playing the outfield. Venable. Uh, in the top of the this inning, he knew that fence was coming up. Yeah, he probably, you know, like a receiver, hears footsteps going across the middle. I think that was the case maybe with Will. That was Jones double that scored the run. One ball, one strike to Will. Good success against Atlanta pitching in his career. 284 with five home runs. Rolled by the mound. Ugla with the easy flip. Two away. Well, the Braves defense will get lots of work from Medlin, who throws a considerable number of ground balls. Reed Johnson, Bourne, and Hayward in the outfield. Chipper at third with Prado at shortstop tonight. He's played five different positions. Ugla and Freeman complete the infield, and Brian McCann behind the plate for skipper Freddie Gonzalez. His team has 17 games above 500 and have a chance to gain on Washington tonight as the Nationals were shut out in Miami in a curious game. That was Steven Strasburg who started. The final score was 9 nothing. Headley takes in the dirt 1-1. One one. Strasburg. Dave Johnson, the manager, had him pitching at the start of the fifth inning, trailing 6 0. Mm. And he gave up another run, 7 0. Now, here's a man they're counting innings. Why would he still be in exactly. there? Exactly. Good point. You almost wonder if Johnson, the manager, and the general manager, Mike Rizzo, are into a little thing there. As Rizzo has already said, well, we're going to shut him down at a certain number, and Johnson probably doesn't like that. That call. I'm sure we'll hear the rest of that story yeah. come tomorrow, or if not sooner. I, I would guess the Washington press are going to examine yeah. why would you keep a man that you're trying to save innings and you leave him in a six nothing game, get to give up another run in the fifth. Line drive, base hit. There goes the no hitter. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Chase Headley with a solid single to right. Mr. August is the first. Base runner for San Diego. Well, Chris Medlin will throw that two C fastball in off the plate to lefties and then run it back in. It'll most likely straighten up the left handers, but Headley does a nice job of staying on it. It's elevated and spinning on that ball nicely for the base knock. Brings up the birthday man, Carlos Quinton. On the upside of 30 now. Against Atlanta in his career, 273. Three home runs. 30 is the new 20 these days. So he's got a lot of time left. A lot of gas left in that tank for Carlos Quentin. 
I hopper to Chipper Jones made to order five three on the double pull on the final lot in the first inning. We go to the second one nothing Braves. Atlanta leading San Diego right now by a score of one to nothing as we begin the second inning and it is social media Tuesday here on Fox Sports San Diego and there's a great way to connect with us. It's called Game Connect. Go to FoxSportsSanDiego.com. You can see it on the lower right hand side. That's where you connect and you get all sorts of information on the matchups, the statistics during the game and there's also a social media window. Send us your tweets. Use the hashtag FS booth. It also picks up Padres as well. And I'm sure we'll have some great topics to discuss tonight. Let's send it back upstairs to Genberg and Mark Grant. All right, Layla, thank you. Here's Reed Johnson hitting an even 300. Came over from the Cubs along with Paul Mahalam, the pitcher last night. The trade deadline bounces one up the middle. Forsyth with a stop, but no play. Johnson with an infield hit. It's a couple of base hits right back through the middle by the Braves. Andrew Werner will take those all night long. Chances are they're going to be at one of the infielders. Just one of those spots you have nothing you can do about it. So Brian McCann, the left-handed hitting catcher, comes up. It's interesting in the chat with Chipper Jones when he talked about the young Braves. Brian McCann was one of the men that he mentioned. He's been an all-star for so long and an outstanding player in the league. You forget he's just 28. McCann, the hitter. Chipper already making a dent in the scoreboard. One nothing. McCann at 234, but like all the Braves, lots of home runs. 18, 58 RBIs, one and one the count. Uh, just working it in and out, out and in, change some speeds. Hey, flip up some change ups and take your chances against these Braves. And if you're a pitcher like Andrew Warner, Casey Kelly, I think this is a pretty good litmus test pitching against a team like this Atlanta Braves, a team that's in contention, a team that has some veterans, some all stars, a future Hall of Famer. See, you know, see how your stuff measures up to the Absolutely. lineup like this. Yeah, this is a team that expects to be in the playoffs. He got him. Got him looking at an 89 mile an hour fastball. That's three strikeouts for Werner. Well, a reminder, folks, that tomorrow at 10:30 here on Fox Sports San Diego, we'll have a live Padres press conference regarding the sale of the franchise. So that final step apparently has been taken, and the announcement to be made tomorrow morning at 10:30. We'll have it live for you here on Fox Sports San Diego. Well, that's good news. Mm -hmm. A lot of excitement ahead for the Padre faithful. Dan Ugla. 
when you look at that batting average, it's a 207. Oh, what a off season for Ugla. Then you look at the rest. 15 homers and 62 runs batted in. 62 ribbies when you're hitting 207 and batting eighth tonight. It is a tough lineup. Reed Johnson at first base with a base hit, one out. Misses outside with a changeup. So the final game of this series, the brief three game homestand with the Braves and then on the road to Colorado and Los Angeles. And we have some of the members of the military with us tonight. That's great to see. Two and one the count. You know, I, I talked to Darren Walsey, the pitching coach for the Padres. I said, give me a little nugget on Warner. What can I look for? Well, he says there might be a little deception. Watch the ball out of the glove. See how it goes right behind his leg there? And it, with his body, the way he kind of tweaks his body a little bit, kind of hides the ball behind him, and then the ball's up top and on top of the hitter. Mm, that looked pretty good. Three and one. Oh, is Darren always good for a pitching nugget? Always learning something new from the pitching coach of the Padres. Yeah, if you were a veteran pitcher and in that dugout and you wanted someday to be a coach, just sit next oh, to yeah. him, pick his brain. I wish I had him as a pitching coach back in the day. Three and one. Fly ball slicing into the corner into foul territory, then a ball and can't make the play. Well, Jason Marquis, who has been all around the league, both leagues, saying that he wished that he had. Had Darren Bosley as his pitching coach 10 years ago. You know who else said that? Greg Maddox back when he was a Padre. So the count now full to Ugla. With the pitcher Chris Medlin on deck. They got him picked off. And he's out by a mile. Good move. Andrew Warner nails Reed Johnson with the pickoff. Now, as soon as that leg was lifted, Reed Johnson was off and running, and Logan Forsythe just get that glove down in front of the bag, let the runner come to you, and you can see Alonzo creating a throwing lane. He went to the baseball. Do you notice he didn't let the baseball come to him? And then he strikes out Ugla. Boy, good strikeout start for Andrew Warner. Four punch outs and in two innings, but Atlanta leads one nothing. AT&T, the largest 4G network. AT&T. Rethink possible. And by Petco, where the healthy pets go. And the Padres come up, bottom of the second inning. Old Mother Moon looking down on San Diego. And it's...
social media night and David Doherty one of our cameramen sends along a shot of uh, young right hander Jacob Doherty in the yeah. San Carlos Little League. I love the eye black. I love the unis and also the glasses. Look at him getting on top of that baseball. <laughs> Dave Doherty camera four ready for take four. No whip hands out there now. Focus focus. I love the whip hand. <laughs> Yandra Alonzo leads it off the first baseman. Chris Medlin working on that long. Shutout string now 21 in the third innings. You saw his win loss record five and one Medlin. The one loss came in relief as a starter. He's been perfect. One and one to Alonzo. Talking about Chipper Jones, Alonzo said when he was a young little leaguer in Miami, that was his hero. He even wore number 10 and wanted to play third base because Chipper was his idol. Mm, low strike there. Well, that got some of the fans behind home plate groaning. Plate umpire is Vic Carapaza. Filed at the plate with Cooper Foster and Timmons working the bases tonight. You know how time flies. I remember seeing Chipper Jones walk into the Braves clubhouse in 1990 after the draft in a pair of jeans, a T-shirt, and his high school hat. <laughs> Out of Jacksonville, Florida yep. High School, Bulls uh, Academy. In the dirt, just a shy kid. Everybody giving him a hard time. He was the first player drafted mm -hmm. now, and it wasn't a secret that he was going to yeah. be pretty good. Yeah, it was between him and Todd Van Poppel, and Bobby Cox wanted a uh, wanted an everyday player, the switch hitting third baseman. How'd that work out? Yeah, pretty good. Alonso caught looking, one away here in the second. And also Todd Van Poppel committed to University of Texas, so that kind of shied away the Braves, and uh, they chose. A kid by the name of Larry Jones. Right at the knees there, two seamer. I like that story about uh, fans trying to get on him by calling him Larry, and he is amused by it. And of course, at Shea Stadium, you can just imagine oh, yeah. those fans getting on Larry. Hey, Larry, no way, <laughs> mister. <laughs> Here's Forsyth. <laughs> and uh, he said he had some of his best games at Shea, including his first big league home run. And so he named one of his sons Shea. Forsyth, one and one. He's uh, been a good hitter at Petco. His overall average, as you can see, 265, but 289 at home. Here's a Bobby Cox fan, number six. He'll be in the Hall of Fame someday, along with Chipper Jones. So tomorrow, fans, uh, I mean, the true baseball fan that cheers hard for his home team, you want uh, the Padres to win, but you respect them. As was the case last night, a wonderful ovation, standing ovation for Jones when they presented him with that surfboard. Come out and see one of the greats all time. You could argue, you know, he's in the discussion, the greatest switch hitter of all time. It'll be his last appearance here in San Diego tomorrow afternoon. Line drive up the middle, base hit four side. He had a hit against Medlin and a couple of lineouts in Atlanta. He was the one player that seemed to read Medlin better than the rest. Second Padre hit. Cameron Maven the bat. Right, aggressive swing by Forsyth and short and quick to the baseball. Maven trying to nudge over that 230 mark. Forsyth, five steals. Medlin's got a quick move, quick with the feet. Dart thrower over to first base. You don't want that big arm swing. He's got 25 members of his family and friends here to cheer him on. He's from Orange County, went to Santa Ana Junior College and El Camino Junior College. That was closer. Mm -hmm. That's the maximum lead that Forsyth best take. Yeah, Medlin, not only quick feet, but he throws a strike right on the yeah. bag. He's Mr. Control. Yeah, from the glove up to the ear. Almost like a quarterback thrown over there to first base. Time call by Maven at the plate. 
he was around for a while in the 2006 draft. They didn't uh, take him until the 10th round, Midland. Hits his spots. Yes, he does. That's what his game is all about. Bolt away to righties and into righties and vice versa to left handed hitters. Physically, he's smaller mm -hmm. than Casey Kelly. Debuted brilliantly last night. Kelly is 6'3, 195. This man is only 5'10 and 190, but same kind of fluid delivery. I'm not comparing pitchers here, but remember Tom Seaver? What was he, 5'9? He, if he was 5'10, I'm Will Chamberlain. Oh, come on. He was six feet tall. I, Tom I, I bet you a dollar on that. How about a donut? I'll bet you uh, even better. <laughs> He okay. might have been 5'11", because I remember meeting him in New York, and I was like, wow, this is my idol growing up. And he's like, I'm kind yeah, of... Yeah, but you're 6'3", 4", aren't you? What are you? 6'2 and a hay. Well, you would have said 6'3". Six, six, yeah. So he would have said if he was 5'11", that he's 6 feet. So I'm saying yeah. in the book, he's 6 feet. Okay. And I will, check I will gladly pay you that donut. I'll have half of it oh. if I give it to you. Caught looking. So both Alonzo and Maven strike out. Well, getting the bat off uh, their shoulder. Well, Chipper uh, participating <laughs> in our Twitter parade. Game stunk. I stunk. And anyone know how to surf? <laughs> Referencing the gift from the San Diego Padres, that beautiful surfboard that he can take back to Florida whenever he goes back to Sarasota or to Jacksonville. Let's see. He said Daytona Beach, I think. Really? Where he grew up. He's First. accountable, isn't he? That's what you got to love yeah. about him as well. Yeah. You know the line that I wrote down. It would be good to put up on any locker room board. Baseball locker room. We'll wait till after this pitch to John Baker. Hit well to center field. That'll chase Bourne back. Still going back, and he runs it down. Oh, he can cover the ground. We saw that last night. And he's able to capture that long bid for extra bases by Baker. It remains one nothing Atlanta. Lead one nothing. Time now for our AT&T trivia question on this beautiful Tuesday night. Who holds the Braves record for consecutive scoreless innings pitch since 1974? Consecutive scoreless innings pitch. Well, you got a lot of choices there with all the good arms and the Braves organization in the last uh, 38 years. We'll give you the answer. Half of the inning. I came up with a, a quiz. I had a Atlanta Braves quiz was. Chipper Jones is number three all time in Braves franchise history. Number one is Henry Aaron. Okay. 
Who's number two? You don't have to answer right away. Ahead of Chipper Jones. In the meantime, drum roll, please. Tom Seaver, 6'1, 195. You know what? I, I'll, I'll admit when I was wrong. When I am wrong, I was wrong. But there's a there's a footnote to the story. When I was talking to Tom Seaver, I was on the top step of the dugout and he was one step down. <laughs> oh, okay, there you go. Yeah. Five. Old, old five fashioned, ten. Old five fashioned ten. glazed French cooler. What do you want? <laughs> I just know that Sieber might be watching tonight, and uh, oh, he's my favorite pitcher growing up. Was loved, he loved the off, the best. Medlin bounces out to second, went away here and, in the top and, of the third, and he wore number 41 as well. Uh, the number yes, that Warner did. is uh, wearing tonight. He scraped the cover right off his knees. Mm. He used to grind down low on his delivery. Gosh, I love to watch him pitch. Well, I'm hoping to go up and visit the. Seaver GTS Winery up in Napa, Calistoga in the offseason. He's making some beautiful Cabernet Sauvignon. GTS Vineyards. People say GTS. George Thomas. Yep. One strike to count to Bourne, who took a third strike his first time. That one didn't miss by much. One and one to Bourne, who's fifth in the major leagues in total hits, 153 hits. Good leadoff man. Oh, look at that. Tony's just taking that moon and putting it right through the 5.5 .5 hole. Oh, take a picture of that. Is that beautiful? <laughs> That's great. That is terrific. Follow back. The magic of television, the magic of our world. Nice going, director Michael Odino and your camera crew. They don't miss a thing. Jam, then that'll fly foul down the left field side. So I got a moment here. The one thing about the Chipper Jones interview where I'd like to put make a little poster mm -hmm. for a baseball oh, locker room. Yeah. Be one ninth of the equation. It's a team game. Isn't that a, that's terrific. That's be absolutely. one ninth. You're not better than the team. Right. Well put. You young little leaguers, uh, get full of yourself. Just remember that you're just one ninth. That's a big, powerful eight ninth. That make that make you part of the team. Two and two. It remains on Bourne. And as a leadoff hitter, Michael Bourne can foul off some pitches, which frustrates Andrew Warner. He has to stick to his strength, though. Down and away, that's where he likes to throw it. Oh, oh that got him in the helmet, but it was a slow curveball, thank goodness. And Bourne's okay. And he says, no, no, no. He waves the trainer off. I'm okay. And that ball was off speed and got away. Looked like it clipped him on the back of the helmet, didn't it? Yeah. He turned the right way, and luckily that helmet stays on. Yep. You know what's interesting about the way the game has changed? The helmet has changed the game. Uh -huh. You know, 30, 40 years ago, on that pitch, the hitter would just drop, and it wouldn't even come close. You would just leave your feet and drop. You were taught to do that. But there's almost that false security given mm -hmm. with the helmet, same as football with that big mask. And sometimes good, sometimes not so. But fortunately, that was not a high hard one, just a... A spinner that got him. So he's okay at first base with one out. Martin Prado singled and scored the Atlanta run. Came home on Chipper Jones two out double in the first inning. Were they wearing helmets by the time you got to high school ball? Oh yeah. I remember watching old Little League footage. Remember they had those like like those flaps that they put over just their ears. That's right. Back yeah. in the day, you know, just like you know, they were actually like hard cardboard. Actually, they were listening to their music. You know, those were just <laughs> <laughs> those were the beats back then. Now the Dr. Dre's. Well, this is the day that the Beatles were about to perform at Candlestick Park in San Francisco, their last That's right. public concert. 1966. Wow. 
Bourne. 37 steals leads the National League. One strike to Prado. Infield set for two. Warner keeping his eye on Bourne. One and one moment here to reflect on our Lexus keys to the game. Well, first one is eight is great, but nine it would be fine. Keep mm -hmm. this streak going. Nine game winning streaks got a nice uh, ring to it. And the home of the no, not the Brave, home of the Padres. Believe it or not, folks, they're back to 500, 32 and 32, right here at their home digs. Oh, right through the legs of Alonso, and that'll take Bourne on to third. Forsyth has to go out into shallow right field. To gather the ball and it's first and third for the Braves. That was a double play ball, but Alonzo came up on it. And an error charge to Yonder, who's been playing outstanding first base, but that one got away from him. Yep, looks like it went right between his legs. One hopper, he came up on it, and he drew leather. So first and third on a hit batsman and an error. And here's Jason Hayward. Hayward grounded to third his first time. Yeah, I was just about to say this before Prado swung at that pitch, but he leads, or he's second rather, grounding into double plays on this club 15 times. Grounding into double plays. I'm sorry, take, yeah, 15. I mean, it was hit hard, and Yonder may have been guilty of what so many players do, and that is, I'm going to field this. Do I go to the bag first, then throw to second, or am I going to throw to second, then to free? He might have just that little moment yeah. of lost concentration in the ball. Ate him up. Now here's the time for his fifth strikeout for Andrew Warner. He's ahead of the count, 0-2. 2012 National League Award candidates. These are candidates for comeback. Jason Hayward from had a bad year last year, but this year is outstanding. H. A. Burnett with a 15-5 record. Buster Posey, 19 home runs. Oh. Ryan Ludwig. That, he should get a lot of votes. Oh, yeah. How about Chase Headley? Wouldn't he qualify? I'd put him up there, yeah. I remember my old teammate back in the day as a Padre, Mark Davis. He said, I'm surprised I never won that award. I come back to spring training every year. <laughs> Qualified, didn't he? <laughs> so two strikes on Hayward. Oh, another broken bat. That one goes all the way out to the shortstop position. Wow. Sawed him off twice. Well, this might surprise fans when you talk about Chase Headley and his ADR BIs. That's more than Andrew McCutcheon, Mark Trumbo, Alfonso Soriano, David Wright, Andre Ethier. Mm. That's quite a year for the Padre third baseman. You betcha. All right, back two strikes the count. Warner looking for that strike out of Hayward. Maybe running out of bats, Hayward. He moves him off the plate. One and two. Maybe a pitch by design so we can go breaking ball down and away or fastball down and away. Struck him out. Curveball. It swung out of the strike zone. That's his fifth strikeout and comes at a perfect time. Now the Padres have the second out on the board and the Braves can't score in the night. Well, well out of the strike zone. I think Mark Sweeney down by the dugout. That fastball setting up because Hayward's probably got in the back of his mind. He might be coming back inside again. You know this more than anyone, Mark. Coming inside like that opens up that side. You know, he stays off the plate a lot in, in Hayward, but Moving his feet just a little bit previously to that last pitch really opened that up. And Mark Sweeney, you have to give credit to John Baker helping to set up that yeah, strikeout. And that's, and that's the reason why you're seeing him work with him. They worked so well together last time. John Baker definitely knows those scouting reports and he executed it right there. Right, here's Chipper again. RBI double the first time. Take strike one. 
about Jones how with all of his years now 40 years of age how well he knows the strike out. Strike zone he struck out only 36 times all year. For a man that hits with that kind of power. This one at Headley has to back up goes the short way and the innings over. So Werner good pitching around the hit batsman and the air it remains one nothing. One to nothing on social media Tuesday, and the tweets continue to come in. Thank you for using the hashtag FS Booth and Little League, our topic today. How about that picture? Thanks, Padres, for supporting our Little Leaguers, part of that Padres initiative to give away jerseys and some of the greatest ones we've seen so far. Also, this one from Michael Noble. He played in the 2001 Little League World Series for Oceanside. And how about that picture with Junior Seau? How memorable is that? Let's send it upstairs. Dick Enberg and Mark Grant. Yeah, that's what makes it, uh, Layla, such a loss. Junior Seau, he was so involved in the community and sports mm -hmm. and kids. Hmm. Andrew Werner, 0 for 3 in his Major League debut. And it'll be Cabrera and Venable here at last of the third. A 1-0 Atlanta lead. Chop to the mound. Medlin over to Freeman, one away. Yeah, well, let's see. It's always fun to you get famous people and you <laughs> see them when they're young and you try to recognize which one of those is Bud Black, folks. Oh, we gave it away. There he is. <laughs> There's the left-hander. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Good stuff. I remember Buddy telling me that when he was a senior in high school, his license read like five six five seven like a hundred and twenty five hundred thirty pounds he was he was a whole lot of nothing growing up then Just he was a late bloomer yeah huh? then he went to junior college and of course San Diego State and then that good dorm food at San Diego there State go, that's yeah. what got him to grow Cabrera up the middle base hit third the Padre hit they've had a single in every inning so one out, tying run aboard. Cabrera, a good base stealer. Right back up the box. Hockey suit. And I love the ground ball to the center fielder. That should be the title of your autobiography. <laughs> ground ball to the center fielder. Yeah. I love the ground ball to the center fielder. Cabrera followed by Will Venable who grounded the second base the first time. Cabrera's string of 24 successful steals without being thrown out was broken in Arizona by that strong arm catcher Montero. Needs to start a new streak. Marking a spot there on the leadoff. off. 
Well, September around the corner, and of course, then there'll be the call-ups by teams from their minor league clubs as their season ends in the minors. Got him. Cabrera can't believe the call from Harry Cooper. Let's see it again. That's that quick move by Medlin. Yeah. The Padres got to respect it. Very quick with the feet. A dart throw over to first base and a perfect strike. Look at this pitch. Or look at it. Actually, I take that back. It was up around Freddie Freeman's head. He just got Cabrera leaning so much. And I was going to ask Mark Sweeney, you know, what do you, with a guy like a good move like Medlin, what do you focus on? Well, you got to really try to get as much as you can because you want to see that move as much as possible to give information to the dugout in case they are in that same situation. But it is going to be really tough to, you said, Mark, he's got very quick feet. Yeah. So base is empty, two outs now in the third. And that wasn't even that good of a, uh, a throw over there at first base. It was high. He just happened to be leaning a little bit too much. And count levels at two and two on Venable. Will's baseball card. That's pretty cool, huh? Have you ever gone into a memorabilia shop and seen uh, what your card, your old baseball card, might be worth? Oh, yeah. Full count to Venable. What what does like what does point oh three <laughs> mean? And it had this funny looking like a C, C? with like a line right through it. Yeah. What's well, that? What's that a symbol for? <laughs> you know, I know the S with the two lines through it. Right. But it's a little C with a straight line through it. Hmm. Venable goes down swinging. Three strikeouts for Medlin. We'll get our investigators on the case. We'll be right back. Real crafty lefty. Uh, he can spot up on the outer half. I mean, he's come a long way so, since I caught him in Tucson. Uh, he was spotting his fastball, throwing his curveball for strikes. Great changeup that I hadn't seen in a while. Uh, I got to go back in there and let him know it wasn't supposed to be for me. <laughs> Yes, Buddy Grandal talking about Casey Kelly's debut. It is our Geico quote of the game, and Grandal called a great game. Dick Enberg, Mark Grant, you can attest to that. I think he does deserve some of that shaving cream. Well, they're saying there's some debate, Layla, whether that's shaving cream or whether it's whipping cream. Mm -hmm. It looks the constituency. It looks like uh, Mom whipped up some vanilla frosting for the cake. It and did, that, didn't it? That consistency. <laughs> Yeah, in fact, Mark Sweeney made a great call being the culinary artist that he is. <laughs> I, I thought it actually looked like custard, but it yeah. was. It was custard. Really? Where'd they get custard? No, I'm just kidding. It's oh. not custard. Whipped cream. You could see it was like a patty. Not a turkey patty, though. I love those. <laughs> yeah, well, you, you put whipped cream on your turkey burgers. 
No, no, no you no, don't no. do that. Yeah. But yeah, I like the fact you you use butterscotch uh, syrup on them. Uh, See, that is it's thick. It, it is. stays on on his wig. Ooh. Not cool whip. Can't do shaving cream anymore. It's no. too much gel out there. Two and two, and that just missed to uh, Freddie Freeman. Full count on Freeman to be followed by Reed Johnson and Brian McCann. Plus that lanolin that's in the shaving cream could burn the eyes. Yeah, I don't think guys worry about that. But and another strikeout. We're looking at how much on eBay a Mark Grant baseball card would cost you folks as. Werner logs another strikeout. That's six for him. And uh, I mean, this is going to be tough. You got to dig deep, folks. If you want just a plain old Mark Grant, a dollar twenty. He said only three cents. Come on. But if you've autographed it, eight dollars. Please, ladies and gentlemen, don't spend your hard-earned money on that. Please. I'll bet you a dime to a donut. People will spend their high fly ball shallow. Behind second base and actually coming back in for it is Logan Forsyth. He takes care of Reed Johnson. Dick, I'm going to give him $10 for the one that he has his sunglasses on. That's my favorite one. Oh, Mark okay. has. We'll look up uh, Mark Sweeney, too, and see what. Uh, they hand those out free at the door if you go into a <laughs> memorabilia don't, place. Don't give it if away. they even have it. McCann struck out his first time. So, Werner, except for. The first inning with a ground ball single to center by Prado and a two out double by Chipper Jones almost caught by Will Venable is. Pitching a fine game again six strikeouts good control no walks but he did hit uh, Michael Bourne. Yeah Mark Sweeney it depends on the in Dodger uniform it's going to cost you nearly ten. That's but if you if you like him in uh, what uniform is that? That's the Rockies uniform. Yeah, that's only a buck. Well, the one it's a beautiful shot at Vero in spring training. Marks in the box and catcher umpire autographed version. Right now it's at nine dollars and ninety nine cents. Buy it now for fitting. Deflected, I believe, by Winner to shortstop Cabrero. One six three put out and Winner retires the Braves in order in the fourth and it didn't cost you a penny. <laughs> Up the middle of the order, Headley, Quentin, Alonzo, anyone gets on foresight. They've got a single in each of the first three innings off Chris Medlin, but he continues to throw goose eggs on the board. Another tweet. Do you guys agree this year? Maybe the best managing job Buddy Black has done for the Padres. Well, uh, you know, he just the, the fact that he uh, had to labor through with his team in April and May. You know, I was looking today if the Padres win tonight. It'll be their 17th win in August. April they won seven. Mm. May they won 10. If they win 17, that'll match the full two months to start the season. And he's rallied this team back, educated them with his great coaching staff, and 
made them winners here in August. Always positive. Great dealing with the youngsters. Great dealing with the veterans. And yeah, I mean, getting the most out of these players right now to make it interesting down the stretch. You no, know, I had a, a scary thought last night. I woke up in the middle of the night. I don't know why I would be thinking about this, but I've been thinking about Mike Sosha. There's a lot of rumble up in Anaheim that if the Angels don't make the playoffs, that it'd be Sosha's last year. I can't imagine that, but he's considered one of the best managers. And I was thinking, gosh, if they would let Sosha go, I sure hope they don't uh, ring Buddy Black's phone. Keep him here in San Diego. Chase Headley singled to right. And hits this one deep to left field. That'll take Reed Johnson to the warning path, and he's got enough room. One away in the fourth. Well, something's placing Clayton Richard in turn both the animated conversation. <laughs> Darren Balls is always good for a, a funny story. Mark Sweeney's down by the action. You uh you got your antennas on down there? I do. And you know what? When Dix is talking about Buddy Black. I think the most important thing and you know this Mark as well. Buddy Black is always going to defer to his coaches doing such a great job. But it is that the whole staff has really energized these guys to play a much better baseball out on the field. As we've said uh, in his six year career here. Bud Black is uh, the dean of students. And those are his professors teaching the classes. Quentin way out in front of a change up. No one to the count. He grounded the third his first time. Glenn Hoffman, great job. Infield coach in there at third. I mean, it's just not coaching for Roberts and Hoffman. They're, they've got other responsibilities, base stealing for Roberts. Rick Renteria, Alonzo, Powell, dual hitting coach. It's Phil Plantier. You saw him Phil, a bit earlier. Soft fly ball center field. Bourne eases in for the second out. A couple of fly ball outs here in the fourth to Yonder Alonzo. Well, we know that Carlos Quinn likes the fastball, and Medlin throws him a fastball first pitch. That's a change up there. And then he goes to the wrinkles. That one misses down and away and out in front of it just a little bit. But good pinpoint control on that breaky ball down and away. And he hasn't walked a man. Struck out three. Ground ball sharply, but Jones playing off the bag and able to throw out Alonso. One, two, three for the first time. The story. Chris Medlin through four leads one nothing. Brought to you by Saquon Casino, Saquon's delicious all-you-can-eat surf and turf buffet with prime rib, crab legs, and over 100 selections, only $20.95.
and by your San Diego County Lexus dealer, who invites you to test drive a luxurious Lexus automobile today. For more information, visit Lexus.com. And back at beautiful Petco Park, middle game of this three-game series after four. Atlanta, one run, three hits, no errors. They've left three. The Padres, no runs, three hits, one error, and have stranded two as Andrew Werner and Chris Medlin in the pitcher's duel. Braves got their run in the first inning on a double with two outs, Chipper Jones. This is Dan Ugla. Then it'll be the pitcher, Medlin, and the leadoff man, Bourne, in the top of the fifth inning. Ugla struck out swinging first time. One and one the count. Twenty five year old from Washington Illinois Andrew Werner. One and two. Went to the University of Indianapolis. Not recruited out of high school. Not recruited out of college or drafted out of college. Went the independent league route. We're talking with some of the. Padre officials down in the dugout. They took team pictures today and they said when he finally signed after that tryout, 40 people, and he's the one of five that made it, and you must have given him something. He said, Nope. <laughs> he's just happy to play. His dad had paid his way to Peoria yeah. to try out. And I guess uh, Tommy Lane got a handsome bonus of $1,000 yeah. when he signed. Uh oh, that one's crushed to deep left field. Quentin doesn't even look back. Looks up. It's well gone almost in the Proceed Pain Cam. Man, did that ball go long distance. Long fly ball home run. Ugla, number 16, and it's 2 0. Well, it was a full count. Andrew Warner trying to. Full of down and away with a changeup, it looked like. He got it up. Yes, he did. How close did this come to go? It hit right on the lip of the can, didn't it? Just below, it looks like it hits that railing. Oh, and then it bounces up. Right. It appears to. They still have that deal going with a, what, a half a million dollars if you plant one in the. I believe paint so. Can? Now, whether it's a hometown Padre or a visiting player as well. How to get clarification on that? That was close. Medlin grounded to second base his first time. Boy, a high changeup it looked like. Yeah. You know, when you throw a fastball, you, know, you kind of supply the power, but an off speed pitch like that, you put a charge into it. So here's your number eight hitter with 16 home runs. And this is a, as powerful as those arms, this lineup of the Braves. Headley has time with the pitcher running. One away. Yes, that uh, is still in effect. Five hundred thousand dollars if you drop a long drive into the middle of that. Really? For Z paint can. Both home and away guy player. I guess so, and I think it goes to charity. Just a Padres home gotcha. run. And it, it would go to charity, not to the player himself. Gotcha. But that's nice. Well, a reminder again tomorrow, folks, at 10:30, live on Fox Sports San Diego, we'll have the Padres press conference announcing the sale of the franchise has been completed. So we'll have the principals involved and in interviews for you live here on Fox Sports San Diego, 10:30 tomorrow morning. Long, arduous task mm -hmm. that has consumed most of the year, but finally official. Born. Can run well, so Forsyth has to hurry and makes the throw in time. Two away. <laughs> We've got another tweet coming in. Mudcat 55 was a two sport star. <laughs> you know, that's the back of my Brave card where uh, in Atlanta, part of our workout routine was uh, throwing the football. Somebody snapped a photo there. It looked like a young Johnny Unitas in that picture. <laughs> I got the high tops working too. <laughs> that was the old traditional pose in the yeah. old days, the quarterback. Got to have your arm, left yeah. arm out farther though. Like in, the in the flat top. 
Yeah. But <laughs> Two away here in the fifth inning. Dan Ugla's home run has given the Braves a 2 nothing lead. Prado a single and safe on an air. Works the count to 2 and 0. Man in the dugout, Mark Sweeney, went up to the University of Maine to play football. That's right. I didn't have a baseball card with a football picture on it, though. So Mark, you were going to be a defensive back? I, I actually went up there to play quarterback, quarterback, and they switched me to defensive back because I was playing baseball at the time okay. as well. So they had to switch it. I was going to miss fall ball and spring practice, and that made it very difficult to stay quarterback. Up there in Orono, Maine, you have to play fall ball. Sometimes the springs get a little uh, a little snowy don't yeah, they? they get snowy and it's actually funny the Lemon Grove Little League that we had previously on our show played up in Maine. That's where they they won that championship. Oh, that's right. They finished second. Yeah that's right. Alonzo takes care of Prado this time. But Douglas home run a blast to deep left field on a high changeup. Oh man did he crush it. It's two nothing Atlanta. Fulcrum of that defense, improved defense, everyone feels as they get ready for the start of the season. Here's the answer to our trivia question, our AT&T trivia question tonight. The Braves' uh, record for consecutive scoreless innings pitched. Greg Maddox went almost 40 straight innings without giving up a run. No surprise there. Last of the fifth, Padres now need two to tie. It'll be Forsyth, Maven, and Baker to bat. Against Chris Medlin. Medlin showing San Diego fans what he offered in Atlanta when he blanked the Padres. Six nothing, a complete game shutout a week and a half ago. Trying to go the 17th start in Atlanta winning 17 games. Never been done. 137 years. That's incredible. Franchise isn't it? history. Forsyth lifts the fly ball to right. Easy chance for Hayward. Forsyth single to center is first at bat. Doesn't seem to be overpowering nope. Medlin, but he just gets everyone out. Just a little bit of movement and great command to both sides of the plate to righties and lefties alike. It's like that last pitch to Forsyth. Down and away, not much a hitter can do with that pitch. They might flare it out there for a base hit. They might get a line drive, maybe a you know a two hopper through the hole. Most threatening uh, drive of the night for the Padres against him was Baker, mm -hmm. deep right center yep. field. That in some parks that would have been trouble. But Michael Bourne chasing it down. Maven took a third strike his first time. 
Back of the plate and out of play. You know, in the uh, weekend off while you were in Arizona, I would see you go through the old films and uh, ran into a few good men. Great movie. Wasn't that a terrific movie? Yeah. One of my favorites. Tom Cruise. Of course, Jack Nicholson with that great courtroom tirade. And you're big on trivia. And uh -oh. in that movie, Tom Cruise, a lawyer, had a good luck symbol that he used whenever yeah. he was thinking, what was it? It was a baseball bat. That's right. He now, went to his closet. All right, part two. Weak wave and a miss. Maven goes down swinging. Fourth strikeout. Well, today we wish Subway restaurants a happy birthday. Let's take a look at this date in baseball history presented by Subway. Mike Schmidt passes both Ted Williams and Willie McCovey on the all time home run list, hitting his 522nd. Phil's 8 1 win over the Padres. 522 for Mike Schmidt. Baker hit the ball long and high, but Bourne able to capture it. The second part of the question was there's a scene where De Demi Moore comes to Cruz's apartment. Right. And in the background, there's a baseball game. Who was the announcer in that game? Actually, the game is at Atlanta's Fulton County Stadium. David Justice is at the plate, and they're playing the Padres, and Jerry Colonel, or Jerry Colonel, Jerry Coleman, the Colonel, is the play by play voice. You're amazing. You're amazing to remember that. And uh, the pitcher was a left handed. Uh, Too much information. I mean, I, I only <laughs> had the two questions. Um, <laughs> you know what? I know the pitcher, too. 0 oh, 2 to Baker. Ground ball swept to second. Ugla right there. And Medlin is mowing him down. That's seven in a row. Civil twilight, holy weather. We had some uh, interesting weather today yeah. around San Diego County, some sprinkles. After five, Atlanta Braves on the shutout pitching of Chris Medlin. He continues to be outstanding. Has a 2 0 advantage as Andrew Werner. He's pitched well. A couple of mistakes, a double by Jones that could have been caught by Venable, and a no doubter, Dan Ogla, trying to hit it out of the county. For his 16th home run. It'll be Hayward, Jones, and Freeman in the top of the sixth. I really thought I'd get you on that because it's just a subtle little background. 
in the uh, movie, and I even asked Jerry Coleman, do you remember, did you go into a studio and voice over? He said, no, I think they just took an actual yep. broadcast. Mm -hmm. L little stuff like that, especially if it's baseball related, I'll pick up on that. Hayward fouls it out of play. You're a savant. <laughs> no, I wouldn't say that. I didn't say idiot. <laughs> 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 Ground ball. 